So uh, on my show, The Andrew Clavin Show, which you should be subscribing to uh, on wherever you get your podcasts, uh, I was talking about the White Lotus and I was talking about political reactions from the left, especially to the White Lotus, and the idea that it ruins art, really, to look for political messages in it. What you're doing when you do that is you're imposing your vision on the art, and you should let the artist have his vision. Let, let him have his vision, experience his vision. If it's entertaining, great. Uh, if it is enlightening, great. If it's not, don't watch it. Don't read, read it. Don't uh, enjoy it. Uh, go to something else. But it's not just the left who does this. The right does it also, and I think a good example of this was in the sequel to Knives Out, The Glass Onion. The original Knives Out was really interesting to me because a lot of younger people saw it and they were just absolutely blown away by it. And I really liked it. I I really enjoyed it. But it was very much a throwback to Agatha Christie type mysteries like And Then There Were None, which was the same kind of uh, mystery in a house, you know, a a big house, uh, different people being killed, all these different suspects. She's a very good observer of the social mores of her time, and that's what Ryan Johnson wanted to do. He wanted to observe his time. So the first Knives Out actually does have a political vision. Uh, The political vision of the first Knives Out is that the rich, the old white people essentially, uh, have grown weak and small because all of the money was made before them. The money and the wealth and the power of America, we had to say it symbolically, was made before them and they're just living off it, waiting to inherit it, and that ruins their lives instead of their becoming creators and independent. And so the honest, wonderful, magical Latina whose parents came over here illegally, she has to now get the house. She has to take over the big house. And so it's a very political uh, commentary, but it's done in a way that's very acceptable, which is this is his vision of the state of the world. And nobody, I think, on the right or the left can deny that it's a legitimate vision, that there is something to be said about the fact that we are so rich, that we are so strong, that we have become weak and lazy, and we've forgotten the very basic elements of hard work uh, and decency that are what made us strong in the first place. So in his new sequel, The Glass Onion, he takes that another step in which he shows you these very wealthy people who have made a living off the fortune of a tech giant and the tech giant invites them all in a classic, classic Agatha Christie type trope. He invites them all to his island, his private island, for a little game. And here's a trailer clip. My dear friends, my beautiful disruptors, my closest inner circle. We could all use a moment of normalcy, and so you are cordially invited for a long weekend on my private island. (laughs) Where we will celebrate the bonds that connect us, and I hope your puzzle-solving skills are whetted because you will also be competing to solve the mystery of my murder. Travel details to come. Please forward any dietary restrictions. (laughs) So it's a very clever setup, but it's a classic setup. You know, we're going to play a little game, my friends. We're going to solve my murder. Bum, bum, bum. And that's a, you know, that's a classic mystery trope. And uh, he does it well. The acting, as always in these, all the, all our actors are just wonderful. I love watching good actors work and I love watching good actors enjoy themselves. Uh, Edward Norton plays the billionaire. And of course, Daniel Craig plays the great classical detective. And there's lots of fun little characters cameo appearances, which are fun. But the thing is, now um, the author, the writer, is in a bit of a bind because he wants to make fun of and display the the super rich uh, and the super rich influencers. And of course, the super rich influencers are all woke. So what he has to do is show that, that, yes, they're woke, but they're all hypocrites. But in doing that, he kind of exposes the hypocrisy of the woke because where does woke come from? It's all rich white people. It's all elite white people. I take responsibility. For every time I explained away police brutality. You don't meet a lot of black, uh, black guys who are woke. You don't meet a lot of normal people uh, who are woke. It's all the elite are, are all woke. And he's, so he is making fun of woke people. At the same time, uh, he is sort of uh, making sure that everybody knows that he's woke. It is extremely important to protect your online privacy with a VPN. Choosing a VPN you trust is equally as important. I use ExpressVPN. I've got it on all my devices. I have full confidence, and I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market, and here's why. 
Number one, ExpressVPN doesn't log your online activity. They've even developed a trusted server technology that makes it impossible for their servers to store any data at all. Number two, speed. ExpressVPN does not slow down your user experience. You can even stream HD videos with zero buffering. I don't even notice the thing is there. I just turn it on. Number three, ExpressVPN is incredibly easy to use. Just fire up the app and tap one button to connect. It's not just me saying this. Business Insider, The Verge, and many other tech journals rate ExpressVPN the number one VPN in the world. Protect yourself with the VPN I trust. Use my link, expressvpn.com slash Andrew Clavin Show today and get three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash Andrew Clavin Show. You probably know how to spell Andrew. I know you know how to spell show, but how do you spell Clavin? Here it is. I watched this and I have to say, just in terms of storytelling, I found it very slow. I found it slow and I found it long. And I, part of that was the structure. Uh, it tells the story. Uh, you know, there's, there are twists and turns inside. It tells the story twice. And I, I just got a little bored with it. It kind of went on too long. It wasn't funny enough to do that. But it did have some great scenes and it did have some great acting. And by the end of it, the end of it was good. And I heard if you watch it, uh, with younger people, like if you watch it with your kids, uh, it, it's it's too obscene for young kids, but if you watch it with your teenage kids, uh, it's more fun. You can kind of enjoy it as kind of a family type thing that you can all laugh about and try to solve it. I did solve it, so it did make sense. And I actually, I didn't just guess at the ending, I actually solved it from watching it, uh, so it does make sense. It seems densely layered, but in reality, the center is in plain sight. Now, a lot of conservatives, including uh, the, uh, the wonderful Ben Shapiro, uh, hated it. It is stupidly plotted. It is filled with stupid characters and stupid writing. And Ryan Johnson's a stupid, stupid man. They said it was woke and they said, it, you know, the mysteries weren't fair. I found the mystery very fair. I thought he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to build a mystery. Uh, it, it's silly. You know, the mysteries are silly. But mysteries like this, this is called a country house mystery, a locker room mystery, whatever you want to call it. They're silly, you know. So it, I, that didn't bother me at all. I do this for a living. I know when it's being done well, he does it fine. You know, it's not like, it's not spectacular, but, it, but it's definitely fine. This is fine. And I did not find the politics oppressive. And the reason I didn't find it oppressive is because it was honest. Same thing I said about White Lotus. If you're honest, if it's an honest vision of the world, I will go along with you with your honest vision of the world. What I won't do is I won't pay attention to you if you have let your opinions, your political opinions, uh, get in the way of your storytelling. A good example of this is Dances with Wolves, a tremendously well-made movie. But at some point, some American cavalrymen are killed by Indians and the audience cheered. And I found that very poisonous because, in fact, the people who replaced the indigenous peoples were just another version of those people. But all people are pretty much corrupt and evil and violent. Uh, and the only difference between the invaders and the indigenous people is indigenous people didn't have, hadn't invented gunpowder. They didn't have the same power. So I, I just felt the morals of that story, the, the kind of Rousseau story where a civilized man joins primitive men and finds the primitive men have something to say in the civilized world is no good. I find that story a little old. So anyway, when I saw that, I was a little bit put off by that, despite of the fact that it was good storytelling. When opinions get in the way, when you show me that Americans are, are rapists and killers when they uh, invade a country, which is just not really true, uh, then I start to think that's just an opinion you're imposing on reality. That's just like uh, your opinion, man. But if you can show me a version of reality that I recognize, I will go along with you even if I know you're as woke as hell. And so I think that the thing we have to do is stop dictating to art what it should be telling us. This is what the left has been doing for the last 50 years. They say, oh, here's Jane Austen. Let's talk about colonialism. Jane Austen isn't about colonialism. It's not about feminism. It's not about, it's about what she is telling you. Let the artist speak. In this case, he's telling an entertaining little mystery. Uh, I, like I said, I found it a little slow, but I didn't find it bad. And I certainly didn't find it uh, poorly done. Right, it was really well that. done and the acting was really Really good. I just think we need a new approach to art, and I think we should get it on the right uh, because the left is stuck in a form of thinking about art that's killing art. That's why there are no good movies because they own the movie industry, but they're not making any good movies. That, that's why, because their woke leftism has destroyed entertainment. We can't make that same mistake and only put forward conservative art. We want to put forward honest, visionary art made by conservatives. That's the way it's done. If you love this fantastic piece of content, I know you did, please like and subscribe and also subscribe to The Andrew Clavin Show on Spotify or Apple, wherever you get your podcasts and give us a five-star review. It really helps.